So instead of creating a brand new part for question two or using this exact part for question number two, I'm going to utilize the configurations in SolidWorks and go ahead and create a new configuration. This will be question two. So now when I go to update all these dimensions, I'm not losing all the work that we did for part number one. So I'm going to right click and manage the equations. I'm going to change the dimension to what's listed in question two, but before I change it, I'm just going to select this configuration. And this seems like it might be a little tedious, but it saves you a ton of time down the road. So this configuration, we want 176 for this configuration. Then we want 137 for this configuration. 39, this configuration. And then these all stay the same, so we won't worry about these quite yet. So I'm going to click OK and Control Q just to rebuild that, make sure everything looks OK. So the beauty about setting up the equations like we did in question one is now when we go to evaluate this, our mass property is dead on. 16,490.5 grams. It's actually five thousandths different, but that is well within the parameters for this answer to be correct on the CSWP exam. All right, let's keep moving. So now we have question three, which is the same part. We just need to update our parameters for a different configuration. But before I get ahead of myself, let's go ahead and add a new configuration. Call it Q3. Click OK. Now when we go and modify these, we need to make sure that our values are updated and this configuration is already selected. So then we just hit tab. 218, this configuration, so hit tab. 169, this configuration. 125, also this configuration. And finally, 41, this configuration. So these equations down here remain the same. A divided by 3, B divided by 3 plus 10. So we will click OK, rebuild this, and then find the mass properties. 15,100.46 grams, dead on. Click OK, and let's go ahead and save this part. You should probably save this part after part one, but I got a little excited and forgot, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now. Just gonna call it CSWP sample. So next, things get a little tricky. We move on to stage two. We have a few changes to make. So let's zoom in on the PDF full screen. First of all, we have this cut that goes around this barrel here, but if we look, it's actually filled in. So the cut doesn't go all the way through this wall. The wall has to fill in up to the inside of the cut. We're also given another cut behind the wall here that's also 20 mil deep with a wall thickness of nine mil. And finally, we have the subtraction of this boss with the hole in it. So we have to suppress that feature there and open up this pocket a little bit more. Other than that, everything stays exactly the same, so we need to just get on with those design changes, and we should be good to go. So, I'm going to add a configuration, Q4, and before we do any of the modifications, let's go ahead and update our equation manager. So A needs to be 221, this configuration. It's important to double check that, make sure that we're still on the right track. 211, this configuration. 165, this configuration, 121, 37, A divided by 3, and here we have a slight difference, take note, B divided by 3 plus 15 instead of 10. So that changes the equation, it's going to obviously change this value. So nothing else has changed, let's go ahead and click OK. So that takes care of all of our modified dimensions. Now we need to actually make the design changes to this part. So first of all, I want to go ahead and suppress this feature altogether. Let's continue and ignore, and what's that saying is that our offset has changed and we'll need to change this fillet here. So let's go ahead and edit that feature and delete our missing edge and add that edge right there. And instead of a fillet of 15, this is in fact 10. So We'll make sure that it is all configurations. Nothing changes here, so click OK. Uh, let's see what else is missing. Looks like we have another missing edge here. 
So let's delete that as well. Fillets in all the corners that exist. So that takes care of that boss. All right, so let's do the cut on the barrel now. I'm gonna select this planter face and create a plane 30 mil into the part because we have this cut that begins 30 mil and flip the offset. So that's where our cut will begin. Let's start a sketch on that plane. Go normal to it. We grab our circle tool. There we can activate the center. And I'm gonna leave it inside and dimension it instead of trying to snap to any geometry. So I'll click escape and S. So I'm just gonna dimension the distance to be 10. And now I'll just create one more circle that is the outer diameter. And I'll actually link that one to this diameter of X. And then when we extrude cut, it has to be 30 millimeters cut from that plane. And there we go. So you can see that that does leave a window between the wall. Best way to tackle this is to open up a sketch on this front planner face, go normal to it. And now we just want to sketch the profile. And in fact, I want to make this wireframe and just sketch a box with two lines and grab the arc tool and then down. And it looks like that arc didn't get put in there, so let me just finish that off with a three-point arc, snap it to that circle. So now, when we extrude that boss, we can switch the direction up to surface and select that surface there. So once we get out of wireframe, it, you can see it fills it in, and that looks exactly how it should look based on the PDF. So finally, we have this one additional cut on the back. So I'm just going to open up a sketch, grab our top view. So I'm going to offset the entities that I can. So I'm going to offset this one here, and 9 is already in there from the last time we offset it, but we need to reverse it. And then I'm just going to grab the rest of this profile. Just trim off these ends, and then start dimensioning. Let's go back to shaded with edges. Make sure add this relation to this point, and Make those coincident, and that'll fully define our sketch. So now let's extrude cut. We can equal to 25 minus 5, hit enter, and that cut will be the correct depth. Finally, we can add some more fillets. So let's go ahead and fillet these three corners. Click OK, and those 10 mil fillets get created. So before we evaluate it, let's do a quick recap. We eliminated the boss here just by suppressing it. We made a cut in this barrel and filled in the space down here, and then made another extruded cut into the base of this part here. So I forgot one thing. We actually need to update our chamfer as well. Instead of 45 degrees, let's actually change this to this configuration and make it 30 degrees. 
Let's rebuild it, find that mass property. Perfect, it's off by one one thousandth. Not gonna worry about that, so far so good. So finally, we have one final question. So I'll add Q5 to the list and get to altering. We need to change this to 229. This configuration is already selected, so we're good there. 217, 263, 219, 34. Our equations remain the same from the previous question, a divided by 3 and b divided by 3 plus 15. Click OK, and let's see what happened. So this boss here is throwing up an issue, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch. See what's going on. Looks like this angle here was not linked to anything, so let's just update it. Let's do wireframe geometry again. Let's make sure that they are co-radial. And exit the sketch and that fixes it. All right, we roll that back, find our mass properties. 14208.01, again, we're off by one one thousandth, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'd call that dead on for the purposes of this exam. So what's great about this is if you do need to go back to any of these, you can just click through and all of those configurations are nice and saved for you. And you can reference those for any of the questions on the exam. So important to note, this is just one part on the exam. There are actually a few different parts that you should be prepared to model and work with on the CSWP exam. This part is representative of the first part of the exam, which is just a straight up modeling challenge that focuses on you being able to change up dimensions and still find an accurate mass. The other parts of the exam do focus on mating parts together in an assembly, as well as making alterations to an existing part. So again, this single example is representative of about a third of the exam, but it's a substantial third of the exam. So thanks for watching this episode of SolidBox TV. If you do have any questions about this or anything else related to SolidWorks, please drop us a line at the contact information provided for you on the screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.